Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, and in today's video I'm going to be grading the futures of every single NBA Eastern Conference team, and then obviously in a separate video I will be doing the Western Conference. I did this about a year ago, and I felt like now was a good time to revisit it. And just to be clear, when I'm talking about the future of these teams, I'm talking about the chances of them being good to a championship contender, something like that, within the next two to three seasons. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA, then consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day. Okay, here we go. We have all of our grades from A plus to A all the way down to F, and we've got all of our Eastern Conference teams here at the bottom of the screen. We're going to begin with the Philadelphia 76ers, and this is a weird one to start with because there are some teams that, for whatever reason, people think that I just don't like as a franchise, and the Sixers happen to be one of those teams that whenever I talk about them and I say anything negative, everybody seems to get really upset. I'm going to give them an A here in the future grades, and I know that there's things going against them. I understand that the Al Horford contract is not good. I understand that the payroll is going to be super high over the next couple of seasons, but if they remain healthy from a... From a talent standpoint in the Eastern Conference, they are in a really good position with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and even guys like Tobias Harris and Josh Richardson. Like they are well set up with guys that are still either in their prime or approaching their prime moving forward. And obviously the fit isn't ideal between Simmons and Embiid and whether they can get that figured out or not, I'm not sure long term. But I feel confident that within the next two to three to four seasons, they're going to still be a really, really good team and probably better than they are now. And even if the fit doesn't work out, they can still trade some pieces and make some moves. So I'm going to give them an A uh, for their future. Moving on now to the Milwaukee Bucks. A tough one because it all depends on what happens with Giannis Antetokounmpo in the summer of 2021. If he leaves, then their future is is shot. Like yes, they have some other players. They've got Chris Middleton. They've got Eric Bledsoe. But without Giannis, it just doesn't work, right? But if he stays in 2021, then there's no reason to think that they can't be a championship contender for the next five to six seasons. So I want to give them an A plus here because. I think that Giannis is staying, and as long as he's there and you have an MVP caliber player there at his age, I think you kind of have to be in that A-plus category. But I'm putting them there with the caveat that obviously if Giannis leaves in 2021, this all changes completely. Moving on now to the Chicago Bulls, another interesting one, a team I've talked about a lot lately. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going to go with a B because I do think that there's an opportunity there, especially now with new people in charge in the front office, to really create something really, really good in Chicago with Lowry Markin and Wendell Carter Jr. making some other moves, uh, keeping Kobe White, making some other moves, trading away guys like Zach Levine. Uh, I do think that there's an opportunity there for them to be real players in the summer of 2020 and free agency. They have the payroll to make it work. They have young talent. And I think that it's at least possible that three to four years from now, we're looking at a Bulls team that is really, really good within the Eastern Conference. Uh, it's not as likely as it is for the Sixers, which is why they're not in the A category, but I feel like a B uh, is definitely fair for that. Moving on now to the Cleveland Cavaliers, and you might think this is a team that would do pretty well in this type of video because they have some younger players, Darius Garland, Colin Sexton. I just don't really like their young players, and I don't, uh, like this is a franchise that all the time screws up you know, rebuilds and, and draft picks, and they never really do this part correctly. And I don't have a ton of confidence that they're going to be able to do that moving forward. And so they're going to go in the D category. And I know that it seems weird, right? Because they have two, you know, young guards that can potentially be good down the road. Even if they become good players, I don't think that this is a team that is going to really do be anything all that impactful over the next a uh, couple of seasons. I still have the Kevin Love contract kind of hanging over them. Uh, so I'm going to put them in the D category, which is probably a bit of a surprise. Moving on now to the Boston Celtics. And there's two different ways to look at this, right? Uh, right now, the Celtics are good and they have some older players on their roster like Kemba Walker. Certainly not old, but older, not necessarily someone you would consider when you're talking about like their future. But then you consider the fact that they have Jason Tatum, who for the last couple of weeks before the league was suspended, looked like a guy that can be an all-NBA caliber player. Then you've got guys like Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart is still relatively young. You've got all these other guys that are coming up. Romeo Langford, they're a team that typically has done a good job drafting as well and has you know some pieces moving forward still to make some moves. So I'm going to put them in the A category because of the potential of Jalen Brown, because of the potential of Jason Tatum, because of the other moves that they can make moving forward. I like the future of the Celtics team as we're looking three to four years down the road. Moving on now to the Atlanta Hawks, and this is going to be, this is not going to make very many Hawks fans happy here. It's kind of a similar situation to the Cleveland Cavaliers where I understand what they're doing and I get that the young, I get the young players that they have. 
I just don't really like that many of the young players they have. Like I, I like DeAndre Hunter as a future glue guy, three and D type player. Um, Kevin Herter, I think has a chance to be a pretty good player. Obviously Trey Young is what he is, but I don't think that he really contributes to winning and he's gonna be one of the worst defensive players in the league for his entire career. So I'm gonna put the Atlanta Hawks in the B category. And I wanted it, I honestly wanted to make it worse than that, but I, I kind of had to pump the brakes on that uh, because Trey Young is so good as a scorer and they do have you know, plenty of options and plenty of young players. I'm just not confident that any of them are really gonna work out and turn out to be anything truly special other than Trey Young, uh, who already is a really, really good player. So I'm gonna put them in the B category. I just, I just don't believe in their young guys. Uh, moving on now to the Miami Heat. And this is in sharp contrast to the Atlanta Hawks. I really believe in the Miami Heat young players. We're talking about Kendrick Nunn, you're talking about Tyler Hero, you're talking about Bam Adebayo. Those three guys I'm confident are going to be good to really good NBA players. And obviously Bam already was an all-star caliber player this season. Um, the issue that I have here is, you know, some of the payroll stuff with Jimmy Butler. And if they strike out in the summer of 2021, do they really have like that guy to lead them to potentially be, uh, you know, a really good team in the next three or four years. However, understanding that they do have the opportunity to bring in big free agents in the summer of 2021, in addition to this young talent that they have, I'm gonna put them in the A category as well. I think that it's a very realistic possibility that this is a group. These four here at the top, the Bucks, the Sixers, the Celtics, and the Heat are still really, really good and still, you know, finals contenders here within the next couple of seasons. I'm gonna put the Miami Heat there at the A spot. Moving on now to the Charlotte Hornets. And this is, um, not necessarily a tough one, but a, a weird one, an interesting one, because you might not think that this team really has all that much young talent, but you know, Terry Rozier could be something. Devontae Graham is a good player. Uh, PJ Washington looked good as a rookie. Miles Bridges is still there. I'm going to put them at a C because I don't really think that they, you know, have a, a chance or a path to get like the guy that they need right now in, in contrast to some of the other teams on this list. But I, I think that they're doing at least a solid job uh, of rebuilding. And I think they have the coaching situation figured out. I really like their coach. Uh, and it really is just going to depend on whether or not they get some lottery luck and get like a number one or number two overall pick in one of these drafts coming up to get the guy. Because they've got plenty of guys that are worth, you know, a six to 12 pick in any given draft. But they need that that true number one option, I think, at this point uh, to really push them over the top. And I don't see that happening unless they get some lottery luck uh, over the next couple of seasons. Now we move on to the New York Knicks. This one's going to be a fun one, right? Um, I mean, you got Mitchell Robinson, you got RJ Barrett, you got some other nice young players on that roster that could turn out to be something. I just, it's the Knicks, man. Like, I just, I don't believe in their ability to do this correctly. And there's nothing in the last 20 years that would show me that they're going to do this correctly. They're going to build the right way. They're going to develop their players properly. Um, I just, I just don't see it, right? And so my debate here is putting them in either the B category or the C category. And that might seem too harsh for a team that does have some young talent, but think about it. Do you really think that this team is gonna be a championship contender, a finals contender in the next three to four years? I don't. So I'm honestly, I'm gonna put them in the C category because RJ Barrett looks like he can be a good to great player. I don't think he's going to be an all NBA caliber guy. Mitchell Robinson, you know, nice piece. Some of the other guys on the roster could end up being something, but Frank like Kevin Knox, both of those guys are pretty much written off for me at this point. Uh, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it with the Knicks. It's the Knicks. They're not going to, they're not going to do a very good job of, of developing their players. So that's where they're going to go. Moving on now to the Orlando Magic, another really tough and interesting one. Like the Eastern Conference, when you really sit down and think about it, it's really tough to kind of figure out, you know, what is going to be happening with these teams moving forward. I like Jonathan Isaac. I think Aaron Gordon can be a really effective player. He's just playing out of position. The Mo Bamba part of this is really difficult to figure out because he's never really been given a chance uh, to do, you know, what he needs to in the NBA to be successful. And that's, you know, be the only big on the floor, get minutes to to develop some of the, the raw talent potential that he does have. The Markel Fultz factor in all this is still kind of a question mark as well. Um, I'm going to put them as a C team as well, just because uh, Jonathan Isaac is really the only player that I really like on that roster. And I don't feel confident in his ability to stay healthy as it relates to like this team being like a championship caliber team in the next three to four seasons. So a tough grade there, but I, I think that's fair to put the magic there at number or at, at, uh, at C for a grade. And now my very own Brooklyn Nets, and this is going to surprise some of y'all. Um, I'm not very bullish on the future of the Brooklyn Nets. This is very much a win now team. You got Kyrie, you got Kevin Durant. You're still trying to figure out what's going to happen beyond that. You've got some younger players on the roster, you know, Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, but 
are those guys going to stick around long term in this whole KD Kyrie era? It seems pretty unlikely, even though that they are signed long term. Looks like trades are going to be in the works. And I don't think that three to four years from now, my team's going to be very good. They're probably going to be good for the next like one to two seasons. And then after that, things are probably going to fall apart. Uh, and so I'm going to put them in the D category and be completely realistic about the three to four year outlook and future of this team. It's not a good one. And so they are going to go uh, in the D category. Next up now, the Indiana Pacers are very solidly in the B category for me. And that's kind of where they've been for the longest time, right? It's like right there in the middle, like Victor Oladipo, nice player. Demonis Sabonis uh, made an all-star team this year and is one of the better young bigs in the league. But they don't have that high upside that some of these other teams do moving forward. They don't have the free agency potential that some of these other teams do moving forward. They're going to be a good team. They're going to be a solid team as long as Sabonis is there and he's healthy, as long as they figure out what to do with him and Miles Turner, as long as Victor Oladipo comes back healthy and plays well. They're going to be good. I just don't think that there's a very high chance that they're going to end up being great over the next handful of seasons. Next up now, the Detroit Pistons. Um, this is the only team that I think truly has an awful future moving forward. Um, this is a team that has struggled to rebuild in the last 15 or so years, and it just doesn't look like they have much of a plan. Like the Blake Griffin thing is a disaster. He signed to a big contract. He's not healthy. He has zero value right now, so you're just gonna have to wait for that to run out. Christian Wood could be somebody, or he could start next season and you know go you kind of come back down to earth and just not really that be that effective of a player moving moving forward. They've got a nice rookie and they've got Luke Kennard. And apart from that, I don't really see a lot from this team moving forward. They don't have the free agency potential. They don't even really have the cap space moving forward when you consider uh, the Blake Griffin situation. I just, I don't love what the Pistons have going on and they're the only team in the F category in this video, unfortunately. Second to last now, the Toronto Raptors, one that I'm sure some of you were relatively anxiously awaiting. Um, I'm going to go, all right, so, so here's the thing. Fred Van Vliet is going to need a new contract, but I think he's a really good player, right? Kyle Lowry is going to be there for at least another season. They're going to have cap space in the summer of 2021. They could be real players for Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Pascal Siakam is a young player that's probably going to be an all-NBA caliber guy for the next couple of seasons. So because of that, I'm going to put them in the A category, and I think it's completely legitimate. Yes, I've had some issues with this team in the past, uh, but for right now, for what they are moving forward, uh, I think it makes complete sense to put them in the A category among uh, these other teams that I put there. Last up now, the Washington Wizards, they don't have a lot going on. They've got Rui Hachimura, they've got Bradley Beal, they've got John Wall coming off an Achilles injury. You don't really know when he's going to come back. You don't know how effective he's going to be when he comes back. I'm putting them in the D category because I think they're headed for a very, very aggressive rebuild here over the next couple of seasons. And their only reason, honestly, they're not in the F category is because they have Bradley Beal either as a player or as a trade asset moving forward. And that can kind of help bolster their, their chances of a rebuild moving forward. So those are all of my grades for the future of the Eastern Conference in the NBA. Uh, probably gonna be some controversy there, but that's fine. I'm, I'm definitely interested to see uh, what you guys have to say down in the comments section below. But with that said, once again, my name is Tucker. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I thank you all very much for watching. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.